I'm really glad you're going to participate in One City, One Book, and we're going to start off by reading Flora and Ulysses. And I have a great opportunity and privilege to read the first three chapters. Chapter 1, A Natural Born Cynic. Flora Bella Buckham was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother, and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto. Flora, her mother shouted, what are you doing up there? I'm reading, Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Do not forget the contract. At the beginning of summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comics and toward the bright light of true literature. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced, and she wrote romance novels. Talk about idiot hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her in a comic strip, strip bubble. It was a comforting thing to have words hanging over her head, especially negative words about romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural-born cynic. Flora suspected that this was true. She was a natural-born cynic who lived in defiance of contracts. Yep, thought Flora, that's me. She bent her head and went back to reading about the amazing Incandesto. She was interrupted a few minutes later by a very loud noise. It sounded as if a jet plane had landed in the Tickham's backyard. What the heck, said Flora. She got up from her desk and looked out the window and saw Mrs. Tickham running around the backyard with a shiny, oversized vacuum cleaner. It looked like she was vacuuming the yard. That can't be, thought Flora. Who vacuums their yard? Actually, it didn't look like Mrs. Tickham knew what she was doing. It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge. And the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind or its engine or something. A few bolts shy of a load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw that Mrs. Tickham was, and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Hey now, said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. There is just no predicting what kind of sentences you might say, thought Flora. For instance, who would ever think you would shout, you're going to vacuum up that squirrel? It didn't make any difference, though, what words she said. Flora was too far away. The vacuum cleaner was too loud. And also, clearly, it was bent on destruction. This malfeasance must be stopped, said Flora in a deep and super heroic voice. This malfeasance must be stopped, was what the unassuming janitor Alfred T. Slipper always said before he was transformed into the amazing incandesto and became a towering, crime-fighting pillar of light. Unfortunately, Alfred T. Slipper wasn't present. Where was incandesto when you needed him? Not that Flora really believed in superheroes, but still, she stood at the window and watched as the squirrel was vacuumed up. Poof! Thump! Holy begumba, said Flora. Chapter 2. The Mind of a Squirrel Not much goes on in the mind of a squirrel. Huge portions, portions of what is loosely termed the squirrel brain are given over to one thought. Food. The average squirrel Cogit cogitation goes something like this. I wonder what there is to eat. This thought, then, is repeated with small variations. 
For example, where's the food, man? I sure am hungry. Is that a piece of food? And are there more pieces of food? Some six or 7,000 times a day. All of this is to say that when the squirrel in the Tickham's backyard got swallowed up by the Ulysses 2000X, there weren't a lot of terribly profound thoughts going on through his head. As the vacuum cleaner roared toward him, he did not, for instance, think, here at last is my fate, come to meet me. He did not think, oh, please give me one more chance and I'll be good. What he thought was, Man, I sure am hungry. And then there was a terrible roar, and he was sucked right off his feet. At that point, there were no thoughts in the squirrel's head, not even thoughts of food. Chapter 3, The Death of a Squirrel Seemingly, swallowing a squirrel was a bit much, even for the powerful, indomitable, indoor-outdoor Ulysses 2000X. Miss Tickham's birthday machine let out an uncertain roar, and stuttered to a stop. Mrs. Tickham bent over and looked down at the vacuum cleaner. There was a tail sticking out of it. For heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham, what's next? She dropped to her knees and gave the tail a tentative tug. She stood up. She looked around the yard. Help, she said. I think I've killed a squirrel. The end of chapter 3.